What's going on everybody, Uncle Jesse here. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Epax E10 mid-size resin 3D printer. This is a 4K mono screen resin 3D printer that I have to say prints absolutely amazing and I am head over heels loving how this machine prints. Let's take a look at it and I'll tell you the ins and outs of the new Epax unit. All right, so like I mentioned, this is the new Epax E10 4K mono screen resin 3D printer. The kind folks over at Epax sent this over to me to share with you all today, give my input and feedback uh, back to them. This is the upgrade to their existing Epax X10 resin 3D printer. I took a look at that last year and it's very similar in size and build volume to this particular E10, but the big difference, you know, just visually is obviously this has a, a removable acrylic case. The original X10 had that front panel that you would lift up to access the prints that you had done and had a little window for you to peek into. I honestly wasn't a big fan of that lift gate that they had on the unit. So I'm really happy to see that they've moved over to the full acrylic display. It makes it much easier for me to see into the actual printer while prints are running as well. Speaking of that acrylic panel here, as you're looking at shots of the printer and close-ups, I should mention that mine did come damaged during shipping. Uh, I did mention this to the folks over at Epax. They confirmed with me that this was a early unit that they sent me. This is not the final design of the acrylic display that will come with the official machines. The unit is on pre-order right now. You can pre-order it over on their website and it, and it has a special pre-order price of $560 currently with a typical retail price of, I think it was $700 is what they'll be shooting for for the unit. All right, let me bust out my laptop and spit out some stats on the actual unit so that you're more informed of what it is before I run off and show you all the cool prints that I've done on the machine. So it has an 8.9 inch 4K mono screen. It has a resolution of 3840 by 2400. It has a build volume of 192 millimeters by 120 millimeters by 250 millimeters vertically. Should also mention that that build volume is slightly taller than the Elgu Saturn. So a nice little plus here for this machine. It also does sport dual rails for the lift mechanism there. So it's a really nice steady and smooth. I should also mention it's very, very quiet when it's not necessarily printing, but when you're just operating it, lowering and lifting the build plate, it's very, very quiet. Obviously the big improvement over the existing X10 is the upgrade to that screen. It is that 4K mono screen display, so you are gonna be able to print faster and that display should in theory last a lot longer than the original display that came on the X10. One other advantage that this printer has over let's say the X10 or even over the Elgu Saturn is that this is, has the potential to have upgrades applied to it in terms of its screen. They're actually already offering a pre-order for a larger display that you'll be able to put in this existing unit that will allow you to print at a, what's it, 5K, which is just crazy to me that you even be able to get up to that resolution. And I think it's a, uh, yeah, it's a 10.1 inch screen. So you'll have a even slightly larger screen that comes with the unit today. That particular model with the 10.1 inch display is also available for pre-order for $700. If you're considering, you know, wanting even in a larger display than what's available right here on this existing one, you might wanna consider that one. One of the differences between the unit that they sent me to show off to you all versus what will actually be available is a slight difference between the build plate and the vat. So the I have an all metal angled build plate here and an all metal vat. What's gonna come with the actual pre-orders is a combination of a molded plastic and metal build plate. I have an example here from the Epax E6 resin 3D printer that I'll be doing a follow-up. I've actually done some prints off of that one as well. It's a smaller version of this same machine that prints at I think 2K resolution. And here you can see it's this plastic material and the actual metal portion where the prints are gonna stick to, that's the only metal piece that's on this. And I've honestly run into zero issues with this. The only other big difference that I can tell is obviously the weight. This weighs a whole lot less than the metal. I don't know if that's gonna impact prints at all. It shouldn't in theory. Uh, I do not have an example of what that molded vat is. I'm assuming it's similar to what I've seen with some of the other 
uh, external extra vats that you can purchase off of Amazon, those sort of things where it's that it's a hard plastic material that the vat will be available in. Obviously you'll be able to upgrade to these metal versions here, but that's all in an effort to help keep the cost down. For anybody looking for a mid-size 4K monoscreen resin 3 printer, that's not gonna cost you, you know, $800 or more. And the Epax E6 resin 3D printer that I'll hopefully have something up on screen to show you what it looks like uh, is also up for pre-order and that's $260. Very similar to the build volume that you'd see on something like an Elgu Mars or an Anycubic Photon, but it's got a 2K monoscreen display. Overall, I really don't have a lot of complaints on this unit. It's a really, really solid build. It is heavy, it's it's hefty, it's really well made. The interface is really straightforward and easy to work with. It's that same interface that you see on most of the printers these days. Uh, the few complaints that I have are, uh, one, I'm not a huge fan of how the, uh, the build plate, excuse me, the vat is actually held in place in the unit, these little knobs unscrew and it leaves the bolts sticking up here. And for this big vat, there's no easy way to grab it. On some of the other machines, there are actual handles so that you can more easily lift the vat in and out of the printer. There's no real easy way to get it other than just grabbing it from the front and back or the sides and lifting it out. The other thing that I wanna call out about all of this, and it has to do again with the vat and how it interacts with these bolts, is you then have to very carefully try to align the openings in order to get that back in place. I would have much rather have seen this work more similar to how the Elgu Saturn works where the bolts and the, or the nuts and the bolt here are all one solid piece that you completely remove, then can more easily get the vat out, then seat it back in and screw it back down. It, it just makes the process a lot easier. Uh, the other thing with these bolts that can come off, like just the little nubs here, is that I have dropped them in the vat with resin twice now. It's it's one of those things that, man, I've got gloves on and it might have, I might have resin on my fingers, on the gloves, and it just slips and falls directly into the vat. Outside of that, it is a little loud when it prints, but that's kind of expected with most of these mid-size and larger printers because they need a lot of fans to help keep the unit cool as it's, you know, printing and processing your files. And I already mentioned the crack acrylic display and that this, you know, it's not the final version that's gonna be sent out, but it's disappointing that that did happen during shipping. Overall, the packaging of this was really nicely done. I think it was just mishandled by the carrier that delivered it, but I was able to very easily repair this just with some tape and super glue. And they did offer to send me a new one. And I said, no, 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 no don't, even, don't even bother. This is completely fine. It's gonna work. It's gonna keep blocking out the sun. So let's talk about the prints. That's what you're all here for. That's what you care about, the machine. The first of those that I wanna talk about is the Creature Armory. I printed his werewolf model here and it turned out spectacular. This is at the default size of his file, so it's slightly larger than your typical miniature. And again, it printed beautifully. All the details on this were really flawless. Everything that I'm gonna be showing you today was printed in the Epex hard resin, and I'm really, really enjoying working with that. I don't think I modified any of the settings that came with the predefined Chi2 box profile for that resin. And I might have just adjusted, I think the support settings, but even those were pretty great right off the bat with that particular profile. Next up from the Creature Armory was a more complex print that was in multiple pieces that I ended up assembling after printing. And this was the Death Rider. And it's just a beautifully done sculpt and it obviously came out great. And the details on this machine I was just cranking out some beautiful things. Both of those files were printed at 0.05 millimeter layer height. And again, just stunning results off of this unit. I did also wanna try printing a few of those at miniature scale. So I printed the werewolf as well as the, what is this, the Naga Queen, uh, this little serpent queen with some of her weapons. And it looks like I actually broke one of the swords <laughs> there <laughs> before filming this. And yeah, th again, all of these turned out great. The difference with these is I did end up printing these at 0 0.03 millimeter layer height. So again, I really wanted to test out what the detail was on a smaller scale at a higher resolution and was not disappointed with these either. If you watched a few of my previous videos, you'll probably have seen that I printed off some of Wexter's masks on this unit as well. This is potentially not only great for anybody printing miniatures or small files, but obviously that larger build volume 
is gonna suit itself towards being able to print some larger cosplay props. Obviously you can't run off and print a full helmet with this, but you could in multiple pieces, or some of these face masks here fit perfectly on this unit. Uh, I did end up rescaling these to fit my face and I did a whole video on that where you can find it in the corner here We're using Nomad Sculpt. But again, the results on this are insanely nice. I mean, you can really see how clean the prints were with these larger size uh, cosplay prints. And my favorite print that I've done off of this unit has to be this Gwenum statue by IR Sculpts. This piece looks like something that I would have bought online as either a kit or an unfinished statue. That it's stunning, absolutely stunning how well this captured the detail on this particular print. Uh, it really helps that the overall design from Iyer Sculpts was just stunning to begin with, but the machine itself did a wonderful job of handling this. Anybody that's out there, you know, making models like this or miniature statues or cosplay pieces or wanting to run off and print a whole bunch of miniatures, this might be the perfect unit for you to consider. It's honestly such a wonderful machine to print with, and I've really had no issues <laughs> with it whatsoever, knock on wood. I mean, other than those few issues that I was calling out of some of my complaints, which are super minor, overall, this machine just prints wonderfully. And there's also a handful of things that I have been using this for, for uh, custom print jobs as well that I can't run off and show, but I've had, again, zero issues with that over the past few weeks with running this machine, and it's been running nonstop processing a few orders for folks. So very, very happy with the results that I'm getting off of the EPAX E10. So if you're interested in the EPAX E10 mid-size 4K mono screen resin 3D printer, I swear they don't make me say that, that's just me saying that. And at the time of this recording here, the pre-order is set at $560. Which it looks like at some point it'll go up in price there, so you might wanna pick it up if you're in the market for one of these mid-size units. Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments what you think about this. I think I'll be doing a big mid-size printer comparison video here in the upcoming weeks between the E10, the Mono X, as well as the Saturn. So stay tuned for that. But I just wanna say thanks again for watching. If you haven't already, consider subscribing. And I'll see you all next time. I just wanna say a huge thank you again to all of my Patreon supporters. Couldn't do this without your help. If you're interested in finding out more about my Patreon, you can find links down below. And by the way, I'm looking to try and dip my toes into the 3D modeling and offering that to my patrons as well. So stay tuned for more on that.